Today we want to talk about the main things that are really helpful to have on your ironing board or near your ironing board when you're pressing things, whether you're quilting or sewing apparel. There's a few basic things that work really well and we wanted to share them with you. We're going to start with Best Press. Best Press is a clear starch alternative. Uh, traditionally, people used potato starch to keep their clothes nice and crisp, um, to keep fabric fibers all in order and laying flat. We like to use Best Press because it doesn't leave a residue. When you're using starch, um, traditional starch, it can build up in areas on the fabric. It doesn't really get down into the fibers. It doesn't really impregnate the fibers. It kind of sits on the surface and, and kind of acts like a kind of a yucky glue to keep everything flat and straight and stiff. But Best Press sinks into the fibers. When you use it, you want to make sure that it you're um, letting it soak in and drying a little bit before you press it. It works just a little differently than regular starch. Second, I want to talk about the Taylor's Clapper when you're trying to set a seam or set a crease when you're pressing is you need the porosity of that wood to draw the heat and moisture out of whatever you're setting, be it a seam or a crease. So what you're doing when you're applying heat and, and moisture into your fabric is you're relaxing those fibers. It's like putting your muscles into a nice hot bath, okay? The fibers are getting used to um, laying with each other and they're also getting used to that lock stitch that's been added if you're pressing a seam. So instead of there being four layers, um, stitching, then fabric, then fabric, then another layer of stitching because your stitching is going like this through your fabric, instead of having four layers right on top of each other, by adding heat and moisture, you're allowing all of those layers to relax and the fibers in the fabric to move aside and the lock stitch to sink down in so everything's going to get a lower profile. And then to make it set, you immediately want to use the clapper to pull out the heat and moisture. That's where you get it set. That's like waiting for your curlers and your hair to cool, only it accelerates the cooling and the uh, drying. So that's why a clapper works so well. And I'm going to show you how it works. Watch this. So we've got our half square triangles here and we're going to start out, Nancy always says set your seam and that is a great idea. So we're going to add heat and moisture just after you've stitched it. We're not even pressing anything to the side yet. And what we're, what we're doing right now is moving all of, the, all of the fibers in the fabric just a little, they're just moving over a little bit so that the lock stitch can settle it for a lower profile right from the start, okay? And then we got the clapper pulling the heat and moisture out. Some people want to press their seam allowances to the darker side and then others want to book seam it so that each side of the seam allowance is, is laying towards its own piece. Um, both ways will work just fine. So what you're going to do, starting by doing this and moving them, pressing them to the dark side, and then we're going to press our clapper down and that's going to pull the heat and moisture out much faster. Already right away when we've pushed all of the seam allowance to this one side, you can see how much flatter and lower profile the seam is already. So it's nice and flat. That's great, um, and these are all pressed to the dark side, and that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is book seaming. These are like a silicone covering for the tips of your fingers that let you get right up next to that iron. In fact, you can touch it. And these things are great for apparel too, like when you're sewing collars or hems or shirt cuffs, you want to get right in there. But it's also really great for getting in just anywhere you want to get in close with your iron but not burn yourself. Check this out now. This is going to be even flatter because what we've done is instead of pressing three layers of fabric all to one side, now you've got two and two. So this is going to lie even flatter. This is the difference. Oh man, that is so flat. This is the difference between a regular quilt and a prize winning quilt. And that's straight out of Nancy's mouth. So if you're going to send a quilt to a competition, to the county fair or your quilt guild, Make sure that you're using a clapper because you want everything to lie as crisp and flat as possible. You can hardly feel, you can't feel, actually I challenge you to feel where the threads are, where that lock stitch is when you run your hand over it. You can feel the seam allowance, but you cannot feel 
the threat. And that's what you want. That's exactly what we're going for. You've got an interview coming up or uh, you're going to church, whatever. You need a nice crisp seam put into your pants. There's a really easy and fast way to do it. You want to start by lining up your, your seams, your inseam and your side seam, like this. Both legs. You're going to pull the sides of your cuffs out, of your hems. Shake it out. This is where you really need a pressing cloth because you don't want any residue that I know everybody says they keep their irons really clean and I don't care how clean you keep your iron that's great you know you could you could get uh, residue from fusible interfacing on there but even if you only use this iron for clothing and you think oh there's no residue on my iron yeah there probably is so lay your press cloth down making sure that everything is covered and you're gonna use your iron to apply heat and moisture but you're not gonna press with it okay let's do it over here so I'm steaming, it, but I'm not pressing down because I don't want to leave iron silhouette marks, press marks in my pants. So I'm just hitting this with heat and moisture. And here's where I'm going to use the clapper. And here's where I'm pressing. And I'm pressing, pulling the heat and the moisture out. It's pretty fast. When I take this away, you've got a really crisp crease right there. And that looks really nice. Can you see that? That's a big deal. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side with just the iron, just so you can see the difference. Um, I'm hoping that it'll show up in film. It definitely shows up in person. I tell people this at sewing weekend and they can't believe the difference. So I'm hitting this with heat and steam. Again, I'm not really, you're going to have to press a little bit with the iron, but just be careful because you really don't want to leave an imprint of the silhouette of the iron in your pant leg. Okay? So that's working too. And that is not bad. That's not a bad crease. But if you look, can you see how crisp and clear this one is compared to this? So of all the things that you should have near your pressing table, you're going to want some kind of starch or starch alternative like Best Press. We love the Best Press. You're gonna want a wooden tailor's clapper. A simple block of wood can make such a difference. A press cloth and the thermal thimbles to prevent you from hurting yourself. So important. So, if you hate ironing as much as everybody else, give this video a thumbs up. If you liked the format of this video, please tell us in the comments section. Let us know what you like, let us know what you don't like. Just put it all down in the comments section. Thank you so much 